It's story time. Hey, Creating Maven. I'm Joy Spencer, your reframe specialist, with one important message. Your real work, it's not your job or your career. Your real work is what you create. And what you create is what sets you apart and makes you incomparable. It's your legacy. I'm here to show you a whole new way of working so you can create with your gifts, make a unique contribution, and finally, get paid to be yourself. This is Reframe to Create. First of all, what's the story bank and why do you need one? This is what it is. A story bank is a container for capturing stories so that they're easy to identify and use when you need them. And you might need a story for any number of things. Maybe you need to use it in an interview. Maybe you need it as part of a pitch to an angel investor. Maybe you need it to share a powerful story during a town hall you're leading as a leader. Or maybe you need it as part of a presentation or a talk. Whatever you need it for, a story bank is a way of finding and using your personal stories in all of these venues in a much smoother and easier way because you've done the work up front and you have a way of capturing stories as you go along. So why does one need one? Why might someone need a story bank? Before I answer that, let me tell you who exactly needs a story bank. Ready for it? Everyone, including you, my creating maven. Whether you're an employee in an organization planning to always stay there, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're a leader of a team or a team member, you need a story bank. And this is why. Storytelling's three great gifts are these. Connection, influence, and action. If you want to build a strong connection, if you want to have influence with others and in the spaces that you enter, if you want to be able to invite others to action, to change, to transformation, you need to share stories. And the most powerful stories to share for building these strong connections and building your influence are your personal stories. But when you tell stories, you're not just going to share all and any stories. You're going to share personal stories, yes, but not private stories. I know this is a hang up for a lot of people that I work with, especially leaders. When I talk about sharing personal stories, they they automatically think, oh, no, private stories. They think about their deepest, darkest secrets and they clutch their pearls and they and they freak out and they're like, oh, no, I don't want to share that. And honestly, honey, nobody wants you to share that either. So that's not what I'm talking about. Private is not the same as personal. So you can keep that. A personal story is a story from your personal life about you. It's not just you in a sterile or distant context of your life or, or you know, of a job title or, or a role. It's the story that peels back and peers behind the professional layer a bit. Just because a personal story isn't private doesn't mean you won't feel vulnerable when you share it. Sure, sure you will. But personal stories aren't private and and they aren't open gaping wounds. There's something we talk about in my storytelling coaches circles. And it's that when it comes to sharing stories, it's about sharing our scars and not our wounds. Your scars can be personal and vulnerable stories that still get you choked up a bit because, you know, they're lessons of falling down and getting back up again. But they are not trauma that you're trying to process or that you haven't processed yet. Okay, you are under no obligation to share those type of stories with any professional job audience ever. In fact, it's better that you don't. Storytelling is powerful for building your personal brand. If you've listened to this podcast before, you've heard me share that getting paid to be you is three things. It sits on three pillars. One, create. Two, own. And three, storytell. That is to create with your gifts, own what you create with your gifts, and tell powerful stories around what you create. Doing these three things, leveraging these three pillars will help you to get paid to be you. So because storytelling is so important to you, wherever you are on your professional or entrepreneurial journey, having a story bank is critical. It makes your work smoother and much easier. So now that you know what it is and why it's important to have one, you're probably asking yourself, Joy, how do I build a story bank? I gotcha. We're going to do that right now. Grab a nice big blank sheet of paper. Yes, if you're not driving, you're going to do this right now. 
And if you're driving, I expect you to catch up with us later, okay? I'll wait. Okay, for those of you who can, grab that nice big blank sheet of paper and I want you to fold it to create three columns. Label the left column A, people, places, and moments. Label the middle column B, lessons and themes. And then label the column on the right C, audience and context. Okay, now I want you to pause this episode and set a timer for seven minutes. And during that seven minutes, I want you to go to column A and start at your earliest memory in life and write down people, places, and moments that you remember. And just keep going. Just keep going for the entire seven minutes. Don't judge, don't edit. And no, you're not gonna use all of these as stories. This is what I call kitchen sinking. We're just putting everything out there and you know, knocking the cobwebs out of your, your head. Every person, place, or moment that you can remember. So for mine, it looks like Mrs. Jackson's Peter Pan play announcement, schoolyard swing accident, I-95 drive to New York with the last $40 in my account, Sixth graders making homemade pizza at Jeremy Wilson's house. Mr. Beecham's memorial, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, okay, you got it? So you just need seven minutes. You're gonna do this for seven minutes. So pause, pause, pause me right now, and I'll see you back in seven minutes. Okay, okay, welcome back. So how was that? Did you come up with moments you'd probably long forgotten? I'm sure you did. Okay, now let's move on to column B, lessons and themes. Now, this is what I want you to do here. For 10 minutes, you're gonna set the timer, you're gonna pause again, and you're gonna set it for 10 minutes, and you're gonna go over all the stuff you put in column A, and next to each one in the, in the corresponding blank spot in column B, write down a lesson or a theme that comes to mind for each moment, person, or place that you put down in column A. And it can be multiple. So for me, next to my story bank paper, next to Mrs. Jackson's Peter Pan play announcement in column B, I have fostering creativity. And then next to the schoolyard swing accident, I have lingering consequences and cost of misusing technology. Next to I-95, I have faith, courage, perseverance, Next to the sixth grader story, I have community and misjudging people. And next to Beecham's memorial, I have community, death, faith, joy, after sorrow and living on, right? So et cetera, et cetera. So these lessons and themes go in column B next to the matching story moment that was in column A, okay? Got it? Okay, you've got 10 minutes for this, so go. All right, <laughs> how was that? I hope that you see how much power is in your seemingly ordinary stories. And I love doing this with my clients because they always get light bulbs and they don't know how much power and how many themes are in their stories. And it's amazing to help people get their stories and their power back. And I don't just let them do it on their own. A lot of times I'm coming up with themes and lessons that I see in their stories that they don't see themselves. I do it this way because instead of having people think of a lesson that they wanna share and then go find a story to match that, which can be very difficult and, and sometimes can feel less authentic, your stories, the many that you have in your life are already full of amazing lessons. And so the, the work is to just mine them for the lessons that are already there, the lessons that are already in them. And sometimes you need someone to help you pull them out. And I'm really good at that. So let's move on now to column C. Column C, audience and contacts. So you just need three minutes for this one. So pause and in column three, go back over all the story moments. And in this column, write the venues or the audiences in front of whom you might share the story with the matching theme in column B. And go all the way down. You know, think about it. Is this something that you could share in front of a team or share in front of, of a room full of professionals from your particular professional association, or maybe this is a story that you can share at a wedding when you're giving a toast or a work presentation. Where, where might you share each of these stories? So just run down column C for three minutes and hammer out the different audiences and contexts where you might use this. And this is your first run at this, right? 
So don't feel stressed if you don't finish and get to the end. Catch you in three minutes. Welcome back and big congratulations, you've done it. You've built your story bank and now all you gotta do is maintain it and pick one or two of these story moments that you've written down and build them out into full stories. And then you've got to practice them by actually telling them to an audience. No, oh, yes, my creating maven. <laughs> storytelling is not theory, it's practice. You won't get better at storytelling if you don't actually practice telling stories out loud and get feedback on how to improve your story. And what do you know? You're in luck. I coach leaders, researchers, entrepreneurs, and other professionals like you one-on-one and in groups to unearth and tell their powerful stories. And I'd love nothing more than to help you build on your story bank by adding the key elements you need to make your stories really good stories that pop. Check out the link in the show notes to schedule and book your story bank coaching session with me. See you soon, Creating Maven. Until then, remember to always ask yourself, what will I create?